Hello everyone. Let's see today introduction of the skull and uh, overview of the bones of the skull. Now we know this is skull and if you see it from in front uh, you will see the front view of the skull right and a separate bone is the mandible that you know. Now for a descriptive purpose the skull can be studied into the views we see. So this is the front view. So uh, this is termed as norma frontalis. So the bones and the features we will study in the norma frontalis, right? That will be the front view. Similarly, if you see the skull from the side, that is termed as norma lateralis. That is the lateral view we study, and the bones and the features we study, right? Now, if we see the skull from above. That is termed as norma verticalis, right? So the bones and the features we'll see in the norma verticalis that will be the superior view. Similarly, if we see the skull from behind, right? This is termed as norma occipitalis, right? Just because mainly the occipital bone is seen, so it is termed as norma occipitalis, the posterior aspect of the skull and the bones contributing to it and the features. Now, if you see the skull from below, right, so this is the inferior view or it is also termed as norma basalis. So, this is how the skull is studied and in addition to it, if we open up the skull cap, this is the skull cap or calvarium. Now, if we cut and open it up, so we can study the skull from inside. Now that is included in the interior of the skull. So in interior again, we can study interior of the calvarium or skull cap and interior of the base of the skull, right? So this is interior of the base of the skull. So this is how we study the skull. Now, you know, there are multiple bones, they join together to form the skull. So total number of bones they contribute to form skull is 22. Now, all these bones are joined together, right? And they are immovable, right? They are fixed, except the mandible, right? Which is joined with a temporal bone to form temporomandibular joint that you know, that is jaw joint. So that is the only bone which is mobile or which is movable. Rest of the bones, they are fixed together. They are joined together and they are immobile. Now, for study purpose, again, the bones which are contributing in formation of the skull, they are divided into two categories. Number one is the bones, they contribute to form the facial skeleton. That you can see the bones which are contributing the norma frontalis or the front view, right? So these bones, you see, they belong to the facial skeleton or splanchnocranium, right? And second category is the bones which are contributing in formation of the interior of the skull, right? And they are also termed as neurocranium, right? Or they are also forming brain box. So, so now let's study the bones which contribute the neurocranium. Now, as I mentioned, this is brain box. And out of 22, the eight bones, they contribute to form the neurocranium or the brain box or the brain case. Now, the eight bones are in the form of two paired and four unpaired bones. Now, which are two paired bones? Number one, you can see over here. This is the superior view and these are the sutures, right? So this is coronal suture, this is sagittal suture, this is lambdoid suture. So these two bones in the parietal region right in the scalp these two are the parietal bones now let me show you separate parietal bones these are the quadrilateral bones and which are having serrated margins and they contribute to form the part of the vault of the skull and the serrations are because of the sutures so you can see over here these two are the parietal bones so they are paired bones second paired bones which contribute to form the neurocranium are the temporal bones. 
now you can see over here this is the temporal region so this is a temporal bone on right and left side now let me show you the separate temporal bones over here you can see this is a temporal bone now how to identify temporal bone it's very easy you can see the external acoustic meatus okay over here you can see external acoustic meatus and behind to it there is a mastoid process okay there is a zygomatic arch right portion of zygomatic arch and this is the squamous part of the temporal bone this is the interior portion this is petrous part of the temporal bone and here again you can see another aperture this is the internal acoustic meatus right this is styloid process so this is how you can identify it as a temporal bone and we'll have a separate video uh, with all the details of it right regarding the temporal bone right so uh, briefly you can with these features you can identify it as a temporal bone so these two are let me show you another one here it is these two are the temporal bones so two pairs right temporal bone and parietal bones they are forming the neurocranium and four bones they are unpaired so total number of bones contributing neurocranium are eight right so let me show you the individual bones or unpaired bones contributing neurocranium from before backward they are in the midline they are unpaired so first is the frontal bone now uh, this is a cut portion so portion of frontal bone is here in the vault so here you can see this is a portion of frontal bone and that contributes scalp and forehead both so this entirely is a frontal bone okay and that also contributes to form part of the roof of the bony orbit right so this is in the midline this is unpaired bone let me show you separate frontal bone here it is see this this is a frontal bone this is one of the unpaired bone of neurocranium and this portion contributes forehead this portion contributes the scalp so this is the squamous part of the frontal bone and these two concave portions they contribute part of the roof of the bony orbit these are the orbital plates right and the concave notch here will lodge the ethmoid so this is a frontal bone and that is unpaired bone second unpaired bone in the midline next to the frontal bone is the ethmoid which is lodging in the u shaped notch in the frontal bone here lies the ethmoid bone let me show you ethmoid it is a pneumatic bone and having multiple uh, air filled spaces these are termed as labyrinth right and more importantly you can see in the midline there is a cribriform plate right see you like bone which is having multiple opening for the olfactory nerves and it's very fragile bone you should be handle uh, handling it very carefully so uh, this is ethmoid and that is lodging in the notch of the frontal bone so uh, this is another unpaired bone i have a separate video regarding the ethmoid right you can uh, watch it now third unpaired bone in the midline next to the ethmoid is the sphenoid right so this portion is uh, contributed by sphenoid it is a butterfly shaped bone let me show you separate sphenoid it is a third unpaired bone here it is so uh, this is sphenoid and uh, we'll have a separate video uh, regarding details of the sphenoid but this is a third unpaired bone now it is a butterfly shaped bone as i mentioned here is a body of sphenoid and these two are the wings right the the smaller one this is the lesser wing and the broader one here it is a greater wing of sphenoid right and they are fused in the midline with the body it is another example of the pneumatic bone it has got uh, air containing or pneumatic sinuses air sinuses in the body right you can see over here these are the sphenoidal air sinuses and here in front you can see two pterygoid plates medial and lateral pterygoid plates right this is body of sphenoid so uh, this is sphenoid above you can see here this is a fossa for pituitary gland right so this is an overview of the sphenoid 
and it lies here exactly okay so this is body this is for the pituitary gland here is a greater wing of sphenoid and these two are the lesser wings right so lesser wing will fuse with the frontal bone and the greater wing will be in relation to the temporal bone the body of the sphenoid will be in relation to the occipital bone so the fourth bone which is unpaired which is next to the sphenoid is the occipital bone so this portion is contributed by occipital bone it is the fourth unpaired bone of the neurocranium let me show you separately here it is this is the occipital bone now it's very easy to identify it it has got a very large opening this is foramen magnum so that you can see here this is foramen magnum and the posterior to the foramen magnum this portion is the squamous part of the occipital bone the major portion is observed from behind in the norma occipitalis right so this is squamous part of the occipital bone this is foramen magnum and on either side of the foramen magnum you can see two condyles and this will articulate with the atlas for cervical vertebrae right so this portion is called as condylar part of the occipital bone and in front to the foramen magnum this portion is the basilar part and it will articulate with the body of the sphenoid right so that you can see here the basilar part of the occipital bone that will fuse with the body of sphenoid right this is foramen magnum this is squamous part of the occipital bone and these two are occipital condyles so total eight bones two paired and four unpaired they contribute to form the neurocranium again i'm repeating two parietal bones will be over here two temporal bones will be in the temporal region squamous part and external acoustic meatus right the mastoid process the styloid process so two paired bones four unpaired bones the frontal bone with the squamous part orbital plate the ethmoid with the creepiform plate and labyrinth the sphenoid with the body lesser wing greater wing and most posteriorly is the occipital bone with the basilar part the condylar part and the squamous part right so these eight bones they contribute to form neurocranium now let's see the bones contributing in formation of the splanchnocranium or the facial skeleton now out of 22 14 bones will contribute to form the facial skeleton now out of 14 two bones they are unpaired number one is the mandible you can see over here with the body the ramus the condyloid process the coronoid process right and it has got an alveolar border which has got sockets for the teeth so this is mandible and second unpaired bone is the vomer now that is forming part of the nasal septum and where you will find vomer uh, you will find vomer from the inferior aspect now this is hard palate and just behind hard palate in the midline you can see a midline partition right bony partition now this is vomer right so the posterior portion of the vomer will form the will separate to posterior nares and it contributes to form part of the nasal septum so from front it's a bit difficult to find the vomer it's in the lowermost portion right in the midline and from behind and below you can easily find it now let me show you vomer separately this is vomer it's very thin triangular bone now it's again very fragile like ethmoid so one should uh, handle it very carefully now if you see it it has got two diverging ala you can make out this two diverging ala and that will articulate with the rostrum of sphenoid right and inferiorly it is uh, contributing to form the nasal septum right it will fuse with the maxilla and palatine bone so this portion will contribute to form nasal septum and these two are diverging ala will join with the rostrum of the sphenoid that is a portion of body of sphenoid and the posterior part right this posterior border 
it is the border which we have seen from the inferior aspect right here so this is how the boomer is connected right this is body of sphenoid and here will be the rostrum of sphenoid so this is boomer so this is second unpaired bone of the facial skeleton or the splanchnocranium first is the mandible second is the boomer now six bones six remaining bones are contributing to form the facial skeleton they are in pair so let me show you first bone it is the maxilla right this is maxilla now how to identify maxilla very simple it has got again alveolar border and the sockets for the teeth right so the another bone is the mandible so that is very obviously uh, identified now second bone with the alveolar border is the maxilla right so this is maxilla it is again a pneumatic bone and you can see over here it has got a sinus this is maxillary air sinus which is largest now here you can see the maxilla this portion this is maxilla and it has got a frontal process it has got a zygomatic process it has got an alveolar process right so that alveolar process below forms alveolar border and that has got the teeth it has got a portion which contributes to form part of the hard palate right the palatine process right so this portion is again maxilla and this is maxilla right so here it is connected to the frontal bone here it is connected to the zygomatic bone below it contributes to form the hard palate here it forms the alveolar socket right and the free margin contribute to form part of the nasal aperture and in the midline both the maxilla are united with each other right so let me show you another maxilla right here you can see this is left and this is right maxilla and if you connect both like this okay this is how the nasal aperture is formed right here it is connected to the frontal bone and this is the upper jaw below you can see they form the hard palate major portion of the hard palate right like this and here is the here will be the zygomatic bone right this is zygomatic process and inside you can see the maxillary air sinuses they open into the little wall of the nose right so uh, this is the paired bone maxilla contributing splanchnocranium another paired bone related to the maxilla is the zygomatic bone here you can see this is zygomatic bone and the same here you can see this portion it's very small bone zygomatic bone and that is forming the prominence of cheek right so above it is connected to the frontal bone this is zygomatic behind it is connected to this zygomatic process of the temporal bone and that forms zygomatic arch and here it is connected to the maxilla right it is uh, also forming part of the boundary of the bony orbit right it is also related to the temporal fossa right and it is the bone which is forming cheek prominence so here is a zygomatic bone the second paired bone in the facial skeleton this is zygomatic bone right now third paired bone which contributes splanchnocranium splanchnocranium is the nasal bone now these two bones they are very small they are very thin and they are triangular over here and they are found deep to the base of the nose right root of the nose you can say and they are very fragile again and they are very likely to be fractured when there is a direct blow over the face right in the nasal region so here lies nasal bone they are connected in midline with each other and above they are connected to the frontal bone on either side they are connected to the maxilla right so let me show you the separate nasal bones here you can see these two are nasal bones and if you connect both like this in the midline they form root of the nose right and above they are connected to the frontal bone like this you can compare okay and on either side there are maxilla below they form part of the nasal aperture right 
let me show you here this portion of the nasal aperture is contributed by the lower free margin of the nasal bone and which is connected to the cartilage right of the external nose and below the aperture is contributed by the maxilla right so these two are nasal bones third paired bone right first is the maxilla second zygomatic third the nasal bone now fourth paired bone is the lacrimal bone now i don't have a separate lacrimal bone because it is papery thin very small over here you can see and that contributes part of the medial wall of the bony orbit right and that forms a groove actually along with the maxilla and that forms the lacrimal sac right or uh, that lodges the lacrimal sac so you can see over here an aperture and just above the aperture there are sutures right and that is basically the lacrimal bone on either side now the fifth pair of the bone is the palatine bone now as the name itself is suggestive of it contributes to form part of the hard palate right now it is again very thin fragile bone it is l shape so you can easily identify it this is l shaped palatine bone it has got multiple processes and you can see over here there is a horizontal plate and this is vertical plate right so where will you find palatine bone if you turn it like this and if you focus on the hard palate the this portion of the hard palate as i mentioned it is contributed by maxilla the posterior one fifth right this portion here you can see the sutures right so this portion is contributed by part of the palatine bone right so this is horizontally oriented so these two are the horizontal plate of the palatine bone over here you can see like this right so this is palatine bone and it has got another processes that also contribute to form part of the lateral wall of the nose this is perpendicular plate right so that is found over here and that will be forming part of the lateral wall of the nose let me show you another one if we join together right like this okay and if you see it from below like this okay so this is posterior most part of the hard palate and that is contributed by this horizontal plate of the palatine bone these two are perpendicular plates and they are forming part of the lateral wall of the nose okay and if you see both connected if you make them connected like this you can see them here these two are the horizontal plates right and here will be the perpendicular plates like this okay so this is fifth bone which is in pair and last paired bone which is contributing splanchnocranium is the inferior nasal concha now concha are the bony shelves and they are found in the lateral wall of the nose now this is nasal aperture in the midline you can see a bony partition that is the nasal septum and on either side there is lateral wall of the nose you can see over here and from that lateral wall of nose you can see certain bony shells hanging out right so the inferior most is the inferior nasal concha there are another two the superior and middle right so on either side in the lateral wall of the nose there are three such bony shells superior middle and inferior nasal concha right now out of these three the superior and middle nasal concha or the bony shells they are part and parcel of ethmoid right and the inferior nasal concha you can see over here it is very thin bony shell on either side these are two separate bones so this is a sixth bone which is in pair which is contributing splanchnocranium let me show you separate inferior nasal concha here it is it is very thin bony plate right bony shell and that is hanging from the lateral wall of the nose and that encloses 
a meatus, right? That is called as inferior meatus of the nose. Into it, there opens nasolacrimal duct. That is part and parcel of the lacrimal apparatus. So this is inferior nasal conga, right? We'll have a separate video uh, showing details of it, right? It's again very thin and fragile bone. Let me show you another one. Here it is. Right. So these two are inferior nasal concha. And it has got two surfaces. The lateral surface and the medial surface. Right. This is medial surface. This is lateral surface. And you can identify it as this one surface is convex. Okay. The medial surface. And the lateral surface is concave, right? So it has got concave convex surfaces. So don't confuse it with the Woomer. Let me show you Woomer again. It's a bony plate, triangular in shape, with two ala, which are diverging. And this is inferior nasal concha, which has got two surfaces. One is convex, one is concave, right? And there are certain processes which articulate with the ethmoid with the lacrimal bone with the maxilla right and that forms part and parcel of the lateral wall of nose that we'll study in detail and this portion of the humor will contribute to form bony uh, nasal septum right bony portion of the nasal septum so these are the six bone which form the splanchnocranium right in the pad so this is about overview of the bones contributing to form skull thanks for watching